So today we are talking about how you can manipulate uh, some of the templates and some of the pieces that are in PhotoP. And so I'm going to show you some things you can do to get started with a document. Um, and also we're going to download one that is the same as, every, as so everybody starts with the same piece and show you how to make some modifications within that. Okay. So uh, go over to PhotoP and the first thing I'm going to do is do new project. Now for this assignment, you're not going to do this. Okay. But for the sake of knowing how to do stuff in PhotoP, we're going to go to new project. When you go to new project, you have a couple of options. You can change the name of it to old project if you just want to make it that be the name or whatever whatever it is that you're working on. This is the name that it's going to save as when you download the file. Um, you also have the choice to change your resolution here. Um, if you have downloaded a picture, if you have done uh, uh, right click copy image, it will look at your clipboard and see what's there and give you that resolution. But you can also put in a custom resolution. You can change this to inches if you wanted to. Uh, or something like that. You also have a chance to change your background. So instead of white, I can make it be transparent or something like that. You also have an option down here to do certain sizes, default sizes. So I don't know the resolution of a Facebook cover page, but there it is right there. Um, so if I clicked on that, this is the resolution that I would need. For Instagram, it gives me a square. Okay, for Facebook event page, all those different things to give you the right size to fit into those programs, all right? You also can go to print. Print is gonna give you a bunch of, uh, these are standard sizes, the A3, A4, and all that. You'll see letter, which is eight and a half by 11, all right? So all of those different things that you can do. And then, so let's just go back to our normal. We'll do this with the eight and a half by 11, that's fine. All right, so now if you scroll through these, it's got a bunch of these that are kind of like default templates that are kind of starting places. This is a good place to get started. If you want to, you can mess with these afterwards. Um, you can hit randomize and get some other choices. And it gives you the stand-in text and stand-in pictures and all, but you can obviously change all those as you go. Um, if you want to, you can also do, I can search from a certain topic like hearts, and I will get things that have that in the search icon for whatever reason. So we'll end up getting some iconography that has hearts in it, all right? Um, so this assignment, though, we I wanted to do, I just wanted to have a chance to show you all of these things. So when you go and make a new project, you don't just hit new like we have been. Um, there are other elements that you can add there, things that you can manipulate, all right? So, um, or especially when you're just playing around, um, it's a good place to get started. Cause sometimes that blank page can be a little intimidating. Uh, when you open up brand new page and it's that white just kind of staring at you, uh, it's good to have some other pieces that are there. You can still go change the fonts. You can still delete the pictures, but um, it's a good place to get started. So the document that we're going to work with, I'm going to go back over here and bring myself back up. I'm going to close this out. So this is the page that we had when we first started. I'm going to go over to my intro to add design, and I'm going to go to the folder for this week, which is trust no one. Um, and then I'm going to go into the photo P folder. So that's where I find the hearts template. So this, if you notice the .psd, that is a Photoshop data file, all right? So that means that if I created something in Photoshop, that's what I would have. So you will not have the option to right click here, okay? Well, you have the option to right click, it just doesn't do anything. If I were to two finger click, that's not gonna work. So I need to download this file. I could either download it here, or if you scroll down, you have an option to download it here. And you see where it just downloaded for me into my downloads folder. So now when I go back over to PhotoP and go to open from computer, so we're not doing a new product, but what we've been doing in the past, we've been doing new project and pasting a picture. We're not doing that. You're going to go to open from computer. Uh, this one was called uh, hearts. Yep. And you see all the times that I've downloaded it just as I've demonstrated that. Okay. So this should be the document that you have. Now I want you to do three things, three techniques on this document for this assignment. I want to change the color of the background. I want to change the size of the heart and I want to change the font and the text on the, um, on the text. I want to change what the text says and what font it is. Okay. So those three things, changing the color of the background, size of the heart and messing with the text. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mess with the background color. So if you go over here on your layers, anytime I say layers, I'm probably talking about your layers panel over here. All right, so right where it's purple right here, if I double click on that, then I get an option to get some colors and I can change this. Okay, so I can change my slider to get this really ugly green, maybe something a little bit darker. We'll do something like that. All right, so all you gotta do, and you could choose one of the default colors here. You could have put in an exact value if you wanted to. That doesn't matter. I just wanna see that you understand how to change the color of the background, all right? 
So, and this is just one of those default slides that you could have gotten from those templates that I was showing you a second ago. So now I want to show you something else and I want to manipulate this heart right here. So what I want to do is I'm going to click on this heart and I'm going to move it. Wait a minute. I'm going to click on this heart and I'm going to move it. No, that's not what I wanted. I want to click on this heart and I want to move it. Here's what's happening. In Photoshop and Photop, one of the most frustrating things that you will experience, at least for me, because I'm used to doing stuff in Illustrator, all right, is there are two places that you have to select, all right? I tell people, like if you were watching a TV show and I said, oh, episode three, okay, episode three of what season? So in Photoshop and in Photop, when you're making a selection, you got to look at the pixels that you're messing with and you got to look at the layer that you're messing with, all right? So I am, when I'm clicking on that heart and moving it, the reason it's selecting that background, I'm clicking on this, because if I look over here, you'll see that I am on the background layer still. So either I need to go and look in my hearts folder and choose the layer that has the heart that I want, or another choice, and this is really, really helpful, just make sure, I'll show you the frustration to show you where this would be, because you're gonna wanna do this. Go up here to the top, you saw me turn it off just a second ago. Go up to the top and turn on auto select, and so now you see I'm on the background layer, right? Just like I was before. And when I click on this heart, it's like, oh, you're talking about the heart. Yeah, I'm talking about the heart. Oh, you're talking about this heart. Yes, I am. Oh, you're talking about the background. All right. So if you get frustrated by that, make sure you have auto select turned on. Okay. It makes it a little bit smarter. That can be good or bad, depending on what you're trying to do. So just keep that in mind. So now that I have selected my heart, now I need to change the size of it. Well, I don't have those little boxes to be able to change it like we have in other programs. That's because I have also turned off transform controls. It's up here at the top. So make sure that you have auto select selected and make sure you have transform controls selected. And then you can just click the corner and drag it up. And I'm holding down shift as I do it because you don't want to squish the heart. All right, don't do that. All right, I'm doing control Z to go back. So I'm holding down to keep yourself from doing this hold down shift and it'll make it where it scales proportionately. Your X and your Y will go out in the same direction, okay? And now you'll notice that I cannot, like, okay, cool, I'm done with that heart. Let me go to this one. And it's like, wait a minute, why is it still on that one? That is because anytime you rotate something or uh, change the size of it, it stays locked into that one piece, all right? So to, my auto select is still selected, but go click on the move tool again. And now you're back, dude, Go click on the move tool. There we go. And now I'm back to being able to go back and select my individual pieces again. All right. So if you get frustrated with that, make sure after you transform either rotating or scaling something that you go back, click on the move tool, and then you'll be able to, to make those changes. All right. So we changed the color of the background. We changed the size of the heart. Our heart grew three sizes that day, just like the Grinch. All right. And so now I'm going to go change my text. All right. So where it says, hello world, I'm going to type my name. We're going to do Mr... Branto, because I'm thinking about going by Mr. Branto. Um, so I'm going to go put Mr. Branto right there. That's fine. And I can change the size of it and all that stuff. I can go on this part over here. I'm going to do uh, add design. All right, so put your name there, put add design there. And now I want to change my font, okay? The way to change your font, if you look, as I've got all these things selected over here, up here at the top, how it says auto select, and you've got a different options up here, so when I go over here and I'm on that layer, I'm gonna double click on my text icon there, double click, and you see these things changed up here, okay? So this says Noto Serif, not to be confused with Moto Surf, which is something they did in the movie Surf Ninjas. Uh, Noto Serif, I'm gonna change that to a different font, all right? And the one we're doing for this assignment, I wanna see, you can change this to any of these, but I wanted to do a specific one for this assignment, and that is top secret, okay? So the name of the font, and we can find it, is top secret, which is also the name of a movie starring Val Kilmer, and it is very underrated and fantastic and hilarious, all right? So change that to top secret. A very young Val Kilmer, I might add. Super young, like, dude, what are you doing? But it's fantastic. It's so good. All right, so I'm going to do this one again, change that to top secret, and that is it, okay? And I've had some people ask me about um, exporting files and how do I save this as a PSD and send it to you and all that. So I've made another video showing you how to do that. The short version, because I'll do it here, is now that you're done and you got everything finished, you're gonna go to File and then Save as PSD, all right? And that'll download, you see it downloaded that as Hearts Template, 
because that was the name of this file. All right, so we changed the color of our background, the size of our heart, the text, and the font over here. Submit this, and that's all you need for this one-third of this week's assignment.